I want to make t-shirts to spread the message about my various projects. One is the Beyond Black project and the other is Save the Preppy. Beyond Black is about showing the diversity within the group of people who could be called black. Um, by that I mean that they physically could be identified as a black person, but they are of an ethnicity or heritage other than African American. Um, the importance of this is that it allows people to show their individual culture and identity without feeling forced to fit into the black box. Um, this is something that has been a struggle for me since college. I grew up in a place where my ethnicity and culture were noticed and celebrated. I hardly ever felt forced to act black or conform to the mainstream African-American identity. The African-Americans around me were cultured, um, accepted that I was different, and didn't really force me to conform to their culture. I was able to appreciate aspects of their culture without being forced to take it as my own. When I went to college, that all changed, and I was constantly being pressured to fit into the black box. Um, I fought against it quietly, but as the pressure continued and increased, I realized I had to make the difference clear. I am different. I am not the stereotypical black person, and I don't really call myself black. Those topics will be discussed in my other videos. Um, I stopped listening to rap because it became too misogynistic, slutty, empty, and violent. I didn't want to listen to songs whose lyrics I would be ashamed to repeat no matter how catchy the beat was. However, because my skin is dark, people constantly um, try to relate to me by singing the latest rap songs. I have no idea who the hottest rapper or even the hottest rap songs are right now. I still like some old school rap songs, but that's about it. Rap is currently popular among a diverse group of people, so it's understandable that it can come up, but it is the main way that some people try to relate to me. They seem to think it is the thing that will automatically make me think that they're cool or cultured or get me, um, which is ironic because I don't listen to rap. <laughs> um, I don't think listening to the current rap songs make someone cultured. It doesn't make someone cultured. Um, not these current ones. Um, I don't speak slang. I don't eat soul food and I don't do stereotypical black people things. So street culture has been trending for years and it wouldn't be so bad if I wasn't constantly being pressured to pretend that I grew up in the ghetto and knew all about street life. I grew up in the suburbs and only saw the real ghetto life on TV or in the movies. However, some people of all ethnicities assume that I went to bad schools, constantly got into physical fights or other stereotypical street behavior. Um, none of that applies to me. None of it applies to me. Some people assumed I was acting white or talking white when I was just being myself. Um, it got frustrating. When I found out about uh, psychopathic people from the street or hoods, um, I really didn't want to be associated with that. I call those people hood rats and I note the difference between them and the average person from the streets or the hood. Um, that is a long explanation for this shirt. Um, I want people to know that Street culture is not my culture. I didn't grow up in the hood and I shouldn't feel pressured to be something I am not. Um, I don't understand the hood culture. I really don't understand the mentality or way of life. It is all new to me. Uh, mainstream culture or mainstream society currently finds hood culture or street culture, cool, but it's it's not my thing. When I was growing up, the preppy was cool. Wealthy or well-to-do minorities were the norm and cool. 
Um, that has changed since mainstream society has focused on Blacks who grew up in impoverished communities and have erroneously accepted them as representatives of real Black people. Um, they don't represent me. As much as the images of well-off Blacks didn't represent them and they fought to be seen, I feel as if Blacks who grew up in wealthy communities have to fight to be seen again. With society more aware of racism and ignorance, um, now is the time for the resurgence of the Blacks who grew up in the suburbs or other well-off areas. Um, I want to save the preppy because the preppy is more representative of me. That explains this church. Um, I'm, I am from the suburbs. I'm proud to be from the suburbs and I want to represent the suburbs. Um, it's a great place to grow up and live. I'm a product of all the good things in my suburban environment and my suburban upbringing. Um, there's no need for me to change that to fit into the trending stereotype of black people. Um, that is a long-winded explanation for my potentially controversial shirts. And I keep saying black people in quotes because, like I said, I don't call myself black. Um, and But I'm going to, but I use it to kind of like simplify the argument, or not even argument, sim simplify the conversation so that people know who I'm referring to. Um... It's weird that these shirts could be seen as controversial, but I want to explain this so that more focus would be on my do-it-yourself t-shirt adventure than what is on the shirts. Now we can talk about the purpose of this video. Um, so I used this, which is the Avery t-shirt transfer for light fabrics. So um, I wanted to get a better angle because um, this is the main focus of the video. So um, this t-shirt was a fail. <laughs> um, the transfers don't really work that well um, when you're transferring only words because of the film around them. This um, Here is the original design. The burbs part is supposed to be white, but because the transfer sheet is transparent, um, the white won't show unless it has a colored background um, in the design. So here's what the t-shirt looked like before I washed it. And you can see the film around the words, but it's a lot clearer. This is what the t-shirt looked like um, after I washed it. And they recommend, uh, as part of the instructions, they recommend that you wash it before wearing it. So I kind of thought that this was going to disappear, but it actually got a little bit more noticeable. Um, let's see. One of the videos told me that I uh, should make a tab. <laughs> so that way when I peel off the shirt, um, peel, off, um, peel off the transfer, uh, it will be a lot easier because I could just grab the little tab. Um, but as you can see, it left a mark. So that's like this little triangle. You can see it. Um, so if you do decide to make off a tab, and it was very useful, and it was a nice suggestion, but I ironed it on. And if you're doing a design, you don't want this little tab here. So um, if you do decide to do a tab, try to just like iron outside of the tab. Like I could have just ironed right around here and then left the tab loose, you know, without ironing it on and then used it to peel. But I didn't know that it was going to show. Um, the light transfers. Um, so if you do it, going to the website that they say, which is this website, um, what it does is after you decide to print, you design it, they have a little like thing that you use to print. And when you, it prints, um, it's going to send you a PDF. Um, it's going to give you a PDF to download. And when you download the PDF, the website already flips it for you because light transfers have to be mirrored when you print them. And the reason why is because when you put them on, you flip them like face down. So everything has to be the right way or else this would be backwards and you can't really read it. It would look like 
yeah, it would be backwards. So um, if you use a design website, it automatically um, flips it or mirrors the image for you. So I ran into problems with printing the image correctly. And I tried things like flipping and reversing the image um, before I realized that I had to print it on the normal transfer and not the t-shirt setting on my printer. So what happened was it would print the right way, but then when I flipped it to iron on the t-shirt, it would be backwards. So thankfully I caught that before I ironed it on. Um, so printing under my printer's light t-shirt transfer setting automatically mirrored the mirrored PDF the website gave me. So no matter how much I did reversing or flipping, I kept getting the same image. And I was like, I don't understand what's going on. So it took a lot of tries, as you can see from the pictures, before I finally got it right. And I think I used two transfer papers. I lost two transfer papers on that, but because um, it was flipped the wrong way. But if I, I kept those because if I use it on, let's say, something that's square or I could just like play with, I'm thinking that you know I can make it look like it was supposed to go the right way. It, of course, you can't go on a t-shirt because you wear a t-shirt one way, you can't flip it around and stuff. Um, so yeah, so it was, it was hard. The light transfers are kind of complicated if you're a first time user and you don't know what you're doing. I would probably work better with it now since you know I've made the mistakes and I've worked through them. The bad thing, well, it's not bad, but I noticed that when I did use my printer's light t-shirt, um, uh, like light t-shirt transfer setting, it seemed like the printer was trying to like, kind of like make the ink set in a lot more, which I liked, but I couldn't use it because like I said, it double flipped the image. Um, so, and then I noticed that when I printed on regular, it just like did the quick zip through. So I kind of lost that, but it's fine. As you can see, it comes, it, come, it came out pretty okay, right? So you can see it's representing the verbs and save the prep. I said prep, this one says save the prep. The original design says preppy. Um, so it, come, it came out all right. It's not a professional result, so I wouldn't sell any t-shirt that I make like this. Um, I think there was some user error in this attempt. Um, it was my first time using t-shirt um, t-shirt transfers and I think that if I had a design that had shapes and not just words it would have come out better. Um, I'm not too upset about it because I'm gonna wear this with my PJs you know no one's gonna see it and you know whatever it's fine you know gets the job done. I'm not gonna throw this t-shirt away I can still wear it and that's pretty much it. This is how the light transfer turned out. The dark t-shirt transfer sheets are easier to work with um, because there is no mirroring needed when you print them. And you can print them as is because you have to um, peel it off. This is what I used. Uh, the Avery dark fabric. So that's what I used. Um, yeah, so you don't need to print them. Um, you can print them as is um, because you have to peel off the back instead of flipping it over and to iron it on. So it wasn't a professional quality result in that the black here doesn't really match the black in my shirt. I kind of wanted it to like blend a bit better. Um, but it's not bad or anything, you know, it's not bad at all. Um, I like the results um, and how the edges melted into the shirt so that you don't really see where the image starts like there's no like real divide it looks like it looks it's a smooth transition right into the image and I like that um, it looks I think I think it looks like a uh, do-it-yourself shirt I you know and I think or just a cheap you know a professional well, something you could buy that's cheap you know it, it looks kind of cheap okay so but it's fine you know it's fine you know, I wouldn't, um, I could wear this out. I think it would be okay to wear out. And um, I, I, I don't consider this a professional result, but I think it's okay. I, I don't see like any problem with it. Like I, I wouldn't use this to, I wouldn't sell this shirt. I would make this shirt and sell it like this. And as you can see um, from the pictures, um, when I added the shirt to it, it looked even better. So it's not bad at all. Um, it's just not a professional result. Um, so I think that if I had a design, um, where there was a solid shape around the words, 
I think that, or like the words were enclosed in a shape, like on the package. Like if you see here, yeah, there's words, but there's like a definite shape around it. And even like with the um, light transfer too, there's like a definite shape um, around it. Um, I think it would look better because with this, um, if you see the original design, it was just supposed to be like all words over the t-shirt, but, um, I wanted the white to show because I knew the white wouldn't show if I didn't have a background. So I put a black background on and then I put this gray line around to kind of, cause, uh, when I, I noticed that the black didn't match the t-shirt. So I was like, okay, so if I put a gray line around it, maybe that will like not make that so obvious. Cause if this wasn't there, it would look, I don't think it, it would look so much worse, but this kind of like, you know, helps a little bit to not make it look like, you know, too do it yourself -ish. Um, so that, so there, so this was my definite shape around like the, all the words and stuff. And I think it did improve the outcome. Um, so yeah, this is okay to wear, but I wouldn't sell shirts made like this. And I think that if I had a, uh, I think that, you know, if I was more experienced and I was one of those people who knew about, you know, t-shirt transfers, I could use these transfers to make like a professional looking, you know, t-shirt. The thing is, it's all about just adjusting this color to match the color of my shirt, but I, I'm, I really don't know how to do that. So, um, as you, so... Yeah, so I had to put the, I'm sorry, I'm like losing my train of thought. I had to put the box around it because if I didn't, you wouldn't see these question marks and you wouldn't see this like in the verb shirt. Um, so that's why I put a black background and here. And with this one, I didn't even use their, um, the website to do it. I just did this one like on PowerPoint or pages or whatever. So this one, I didn't use the website to do it and because I didn't need it to be flipped. So that, so that helped a lot too. Um, so the design was supposed to look like this and I did like how the box ironed on. Again, I like the smooth transition and I think I'm going to try again with a design that has a definite shape. I'm not sure, you know, I'm sure, like I said, if I knew more about t-shirts temp um, transfers I could use this to make professional t-shirts but I don't so this is the this so this is for beginners like me and um, I hope that helped a bit so you could avoid some of the mistakes I made and you could understand a little bit more and save yourself losing about two or three papers I like wearing men's pajama pants um, I bought a pajama set because I like the pants, but I didn't care for the shirt. Um, I decided to add some prep appeal uh, to the shirt, and this is going to be interesting because it's not a new shirt. It's a pajama set that I've had for quite a while, and I've washed it many times. Um, so I don't know how it's going to work out or if it, it's even going to take the transfer. The other two shirts, this shirt and the other shirt, um, they were new shirts, so... That was pretty much what the package recommend but this is gonna be a used well a shirt that's been worn and washed a couple times so I'm interested to see how that comes out um, I made a plaid prep cat uh, the prep cat is the save the preppy cat um, and you'll see later and I will transfer that to the pajama shirt Brown spots. I just put too much heat and pressure, and I burned it. So if you're using white, 
be very careful because you can see on the white it does show, but it doesn't show on the print copy. So if you're using white, don't put too much pressure and don't linger too long or you're going to get these burn marks. But these are just PJs, so I don't really care. Um, but as you can see, it's pretty much embedded in there. I like, I like how it just like melts into the shirt. Nothing's coming off. You know, even if I scratch a bit, I'm not going to scratch too much. Um, and that's it.